they become influential if God's not ruling you the kingdom is not there no matter what you call yourself I'm a Christian a lot of Christians sad to say are traitors really traitor yes traitors really and have betrayed the prayers the confidence and the trust of the people who prayed them to where they are in the first place because the fact of the matter is if we are going to pray your success and you become successful and you're going to turn around and forget us who have prayed for your success and when you get a seat at the table instead of telling it like it really is you start saying all kind of sugar coated stuff that's not making a difference to anyone that is suffering in our community then I say you have betrayed us I wish I had some help in here today Y'all just scared to clap your hands, aren't you? You're scared to clap your hands. That's a shame. That's a shame. That's a shame. I say enough little boys and girls killed on our streets. I say, I say enough of the gun crime, enough of the knife crime, enough of all of the educational dropouts, enough of all these young men and women going mentally insane, enough of them populating the prisons. I say enough of that. The devil has only unleashed hell against them because of the prophecy, the potential, and the destiny that is within each and every one of them. And I say enough of that. And we won't change it by taking on Saul's armor. We will change it by picking up the stones that, have, that we have used to kill the lion, that we have used to kill the bear, picking up the gospel. Come on, becoming a soul winner. Y'all not to just walk to church by yourself empty-handed. Y'all to invite somebody else because the kingdom is a heart kingdom and the kingdom is only established and extended as more hearts are turned on to God. I wish I had some help here today. If we're going to pray your success, then you better remember us when you become successful. Listen, they're all saying yes, yes, but I could count, I could fill the whole back of this church with the people who walked into my ministry like a three-winged goose flying backwards in a blizzard. Life contorted and distorted in every conceivable way. Through our gospel and our biblical principles, we took the appetite for drugs out of their vein. We took the violent temper out of their life. We took the illiteracy out of their mind and turned them on to books, turned them on to study. We planted a dream of greatness in their mind and they began imagining bigger things for themselves. They began to pull themselves up by the power of a consistent word pulling them up. When they got up, they got married, they had children, they got a car, they bought a semi-detached house. They now running a business and when they picked up, watch this. You know, I think it's time to move on. I think it's time to just move on. We have built so many churches in this city. You go to them, you'll walk in, and you will think, my God, where is the bishop? He's the only one missing. We've built them. Snatched people out of madness. Worked with them through the muck and the mire of their mess. Real messy stuff. Then they get a prophecy. Yay. And they commit the second heresy. And here it is. 
Jesus said, these signs shall follow them that believe. He didn't say that believers will follow these signs. And they'll, they'll walk away in a heartbeat, no problems. Because now this is, an, this is a new thing. Great. I say to all of them, God bless you. Have a wonderful life. This brother won't hold one iota of a stain of a thought that is negative towards you. I will only say this. If you become powerful, okay, and you make it to the top of the ladder, don't do like some of our traitors have done. Spin round and pull the ladder up to make sure that nobody else gets up the ladder. Don't do that. Don't do that. Now, in this house, this is what we're going to do. We're going to be mission-focused. Right? We have a mission. And we're going to use the tools that work for us. What tools are they? Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. There it is. There it is. I am not standing here because... The government gave me a basketball court to go and play basketball in. I am here because when I was 15 years old, I walked into a church. Admittedly for all the wrong reasons. That's why I don't care what you come here for. I have no problem. People say, I don't think I can come to church because, you know, it's just, yeah, I'm coming for the wrong reason. Come for whatever reason. That's what happened to me. I turned up at church and I was convicted by the presence of something bigger than me. I went to the altar not even fully understanding what I was doing, but in the altar I asked Jesus to save my soul. Well, that's why I'm here today. That's probably why you're here today. You have a variation of that story. You have a past. Anyone here have a past? <laughs> hey, hey. There's, I can see some past in here. <laughs> so, we're going to be mission focused. Okay? Let's get focused. Some have lost their focus. You know what some people believe church growth is? This is what church growth is for some people. If I can convince everyone in that church over there to come to this church, then we'll be growing. What if I could just put on a program and invite all them, their churches to come to this program? When they come, we get all their names and addresses, and then we keep on sending them letters all the time to them to come. It sounds like a joke, doesn't it? But it's what goes on every day. All right. Can we at least be one church? Can we at least have one church that values a sinner coming to repentance? Can we, can we be that? Be one church that does that? Yes. Stand up on your feet. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Lift your hands up to God right now. Father, we've said a lot today. There's a lot of thoughts turning over in our minds. There are initiatives being born in our spirit. God, in Jesus' name, as we put the horse before the cart, put the mission before the money, make the mission, the vision, the goal, more important than the means. Jesus, raise, raise us up as a church. Make us a witness 
of what being mission focused can really do in a community.